This is MathGuide.com. My name is Mark Karadimos. Today we're going to calculate the volume of an open box and actually figure out how we can maximize the volume of that open box. So uh, let's say we start with a flat sheet of cardboard and, and I want you to kind of visualize what's going to happen here. What we're going to do is take this sheet of cardboard, use your imagination that this cardboard with just little markings on it, and I'm going to cut off these corners. I'm going to cut off the corners, and I'm not sure how much I'm going to cut, cut off here, but I'm going to cut off the corners so that each of these corners is the same size. So these are like little uh, squares, and they're all these squares are the same size, and I'm not quite sure how much size they're going to be, like how much on an edge, but they're all going to be the same exact size. So imagine chopping off those little red squares, and then what we're going to do is fold up the uh, edges along these red lines, or segments actually. So we're going to fold it along these red lines and we're going to fold it up to make a box and the box is going to look like this. So here's what it would look like once all the uh, ends are all flattened out, or I should say uh, folded upward, I should say. Okay, so you remove those corners, fold along the red lines, and then you'd have this shape once we fold that up. And you can see it has an open box and that gray being the bottom of the box. All right, well, there's a couple things that you'd have to be given here first to figure out how we're going to calculate the volume of this box. Is, and one of those things is, what are the dimensions of this rectangle that we're starting with, right? This, re this whole rectangular sheet of cardboard. All right, now I'm going to do an actual problem here. And so let's say that we were given a sheet of cardboard that is, let's say it's 60 inches for the length. Okay, so that's from edge to edge is going to be 60 inches. Okay, and then let's say that the width is 38 inches. Okay, and that would be from corner to corner again. All right, and what I want to do is chop off corners. So let's say the corners of the box are going to be unknown, but the edges are going to be X, right? I'm chopping off these little corners, and each one of them is X uh, by X. Okay, so I'm chopping off little X's here. In other words, I don't know how much I'm chopping off. I don't know what that length is. I don't know what that length is, but it is X. So that's X. That's going to be X. That's going to be X, and that's going to be X. It's kind of hard to draw it in there, but I guess I could put it in there. So chop those off. Okay, and over here too, this would be an X. So all of those corners are X by X's. So all the squares are congruent. All right, so what I want to do now is do something a little bit harder, is figure out now what is the length of the box. I mean, I know the length of the cardboard. So the cardboard is 60 inches long, right? So I know it's 60 inches long on the side, but remember, I'm chopping off X and I'm chopping off X, I'm going to fold it up, right? I, I want to know what's going to be the length inside the bottom of the box. In other words, the length along the side here after I fold up the sides. So it's 60, but I'm going to take away X, and I'm going to take away another X. So it's going to be 60 minus 2X. That's how much the length is going to be on the bottom of this box. All right, likewise, I want to know what's the width of the box. So I want to figure out what that distance is. Okay, what that distance is. Again, I know the whole length, right? The whole, I should say, width is 38 inches. Except, again, I'm taking off X off that, X off that, and folding it up. So I want to know what's that inside bottom width, which is the gray distance, right? from that red line to that red line. So it's going to be 38 is the starting width. 
but then I'm chopping off x, I'm chopping off x, I'm chopping off 2x's. So it's 38 minus 2x. Okay. All right. So that means the length of the box is 60 minus 2x. And I know the width of the box is 38 minus 2x. I also know the height of the box. The height of the box is actually x. So I know the height. I'll put it over here. The height is x. Now, if you know anything about volume, you know that volume... Let's do this in white. So you know that the volume of any prism, any rectangular prism, is length times width times height. All right, so the volume is going to be equal to, let's see, the length is 60 minus 2x. Okay, the width is 38 minus 2x. And the height is x. All right, now if I were to multiply those together, which I'm not going to bother, I can multiply those guys together to get the polynomial, which would be a cubic. It's going to be a cubic polynomial. So what I would do then to figure out what the volume of this is uh, and figure out how I can maximize the volume is I would actually graph this. And I would throw this into, like, let's say, a graphing calculator. And I would put in y equals, and I would put in exactly what this is into a graphing calculator. And it's going to give me a picture. All right, I'm going to show you what that picture looks like. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that picture a little bit lower. So I'm going to lower this, make myself a little bit of room. So I'm going to graph that, and let's see what it looks like. So I'm going to paste it right in there. All right, so it turns out when I graph this thing, uh, it turns out as a cubic is always going to look, it has one end going down, the other end going up, because it's an odd degree polynomial, branches going opposite directions, and I get this little hump goes down and up here. Now, it turns out that when I'm looking for my maximum value, obviously you can see here's a maximum, and I'm not going to use these points because it actually is going to be too far over to the right. Okay, let me show you what I mean. So I found this point by using the graphing calculator, and it turns out that uh, the value there, let's see, the x value is 7.5. Five, seven, and it has a maximum height on this graph, which actually is the volume of 77.60. Okay, so that's that point right there. Okay, so that's the maximum point. Uh, and it turns out that this value right here, I found that where the graph crosses the x-axis is 19 comma zero. It's kind of curious where that point is. Uh, and it turns out that our maximum has to occur in this particular area of the curve. Because if you just look at the domain value, you know, I mean, I guess the, the graph or the, the box, it cannot have a domain of zero. I mean, x cannot be zero. If x is zero, that means I'm not chopping off any part of my uh, cardboard box. If I don't chop off anything, I can't lift any um, any of these corners. I should say I can't lift the edge to make a side of the box. So I know that x has to be larger than zero. Okay, so I know x is larger than zero. It can't even be equal to zero. Equal to zero is not going to be uh, on there. And if you go back to this, you could see that if if x is 19, if I put a 19 in there, 2 times 19 is 38. 38 minus 38 is 0, so the width would be 0. And if you've got a box with a width of 0, you don't really even have a box. So I know my graph, or my uh, x values, have to be um, less than 19. It can't even be equal to 19. So I know that the acceptable values for x for this particular problem have to, uh, you know,
flow between 0 and 19 uh, and not even including those values. So I can only look at this part of the, the graph. I'm not even going to bother looking at this part because I won't even have a box. So along this particular curve, I know that it has to be some maximum value in that, in that region. So the high point is right there. So it turns out I get a 7.57 is the, is the x value that creates the maximum volume. So I know my maximum volume is 77.60 when x is 7.57. Okay, so this way I know that the height, right, which is x, the height has to be 7.57. Of course, this is all in inches. And uh, I could even figure out what these are going to be. Like, let's say if I wanted to figure out the width. The width is 38 minus 2x. Or in other words, it's 38 minus 2 times 7.57. And that's 22.86. 22.86. Okay, and of course now we can figure out what the length is. Well, the length is 60 minus 2x, which is 60 minus 2 times x. Forty-four point eight six. All right, so it turns out that I know my my height my width and my length and of course that will generate my maximum volume of 77.60 of course that would be cubic uh, inches cubic inches so I'll put inches cube alright so that's how you do this problem it's got a couple of steps and probably the hardest part here is looking at this and uh, figuring out how to set up these values here. And it's always going to be the width, 38, right? 38 was the width. And you got to take off two of these x's. And then likewise, here you had 60 was the whole length. But then you're taking off an x, another x, we're taking off the two x's. And then when you multiply those three, x, 38 minus 2x, 60 minus 2x, you're going to get the volume. And you just graph that and find that little hump in the graph there, right, that hill, hill is the maximum, and that'll tell you the x value, and of course the maximum volume. Okay, so then you could go back, look at your setup, and figure out what your, uh, your obviously your height is, is just x, and your width, and your length, and write all this stuff down, and now you know how to calculate the maximum volume of the open box. So make sure you go back to mathguide.com, Check out all our interactive quizzes, all our instructional videos, and text lessons. Take care.